Practice question number one. I'm not going to read all of these out for you, so pause the video now and give it a go. When you're ready, play the video because the answers will come up shortly after. Here are the answers to the first exercise. Very similar to the practice exercise, just on a different object. I hope this one was easy. Question two. Pause now and give it a go. And here are the answers to question two. For the exercise, note that we do not wrap the 50 in single quotes because we want it to be treated as a number, not text. For the challenge, you had to use an AND statement to add a second filter. Question three. Pause now and execute. Here are the answers to question three. For the exercise, we needed to use the OR keyword. Using the IN keyword would have been perfectly acceptable as well. The challenge was a little tougher because we needed to exclude contacts without an account. To properly include that filter, we need to surround our original filter with parentheses then add the new filter using an AND clause. If you attempted to do this without any parentheses, your results likely aren't right. Question number four. Pause now and good luck. Answers to question four. This exercise focused on using date fields. You could have probably thought of many clever ways to do this, but the simplest way would have been to have two filters one to be greater than or equal to the beginning of the year 2000, and one to be less than or equal to the end of the year 2000. The challenge was actually pretty challenging. Even I messed up on it in my first go. The idea is to add additional filters so that the date is either before May or after May, but it's easy to get your parentheses, ands, and ors mixed up here. There are other ways you could have solved this challenge as well. As long as your results look good in the data set, you can consider your query to be sound. Practice question five, pause now. Answers to question five. The focus of this question was cross object SQL, specifically on parent objects. In the main exercise, there's one filter on the child object and one filter on the parent object. The challenge tries to trick you with your usage of parentheses, ands, and ors. This is a skill you need to master because most SQL queries are like this. Question six, pause now. Answers to question six. This question tests your knowledge of using the fuzzy matching like keyword in SQL. For the exercise, you needed to have the wildcard character before the at outlook.com portion. No need for a wildcard after it. The challenge just makes sure you understand that you can also use cross object filters with your like filter. It's also a subtle dig at government agencies who are behind with their technology. Ha! Question seven, pause now and code. Answers to number seven. This is another test of your fuzzy matching skills. This time you need to use the wildcard on both sides of the sales string because characters may come before or after the word sales. The challenge, again, is a test of your parentheses and and or skills. But this time, you need parentheses inside your parentheses. Note that in the final line, you could also have used two or statements instead of the in statement. Question eight. These are getting pretty tough. Pause now. Answers to question eight. Okay. This one actually wasn't that tough. You just need to remember that you can sort up or down using the order by clause. Limiting is pretty easy too. The challenge just adds one more dimension to sort by, reinforcing that you can sort by multiple columns, each in either ascending or descending order. Question nine, I promise this one is really tough. Pause now. Answers to question nine. For this exercise, you need to remember how to do inner queries because you're querying child objects. The key requirement here is that you only have one row for each account. You could have done this the other way by running a regular query on the contact object instead, then querying the account information, but then you'd have more than one row for each account. 
The challenge just tests your WHERE clause knowledge on inner queries. Last one. This one is the toughest in my opinion. Pause now and good luck. Answers to the final challenge. For this exercise, you needed to identify that you are getting summarized information, meaning you needed to use the group by keyword. It takes a while to get the hang of using group by, so even though the query looks simple, don't feel bad if you didn't get it. You could have also grouped by account name, but technically account ID is better in case two accounts have the same name. For the challenge, you needed to remember that aggregate formulas work on dates too. To get the youngest contact, you actually needed to get the max birth date, not the min. And with that, congratulations maestro, you've passed the Sockle Bootcamp. You truly know the vast majority of the Sockle programming language now.